Welcome to our service of morning prayer. I hope you're all staying well and taking advantage of the ease restrictions to get out and about. O oh Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Psalm 69. Surely for your sake I have suffered reproach and shame has covered my face. I have become a stranger to my own kindred, an alien to my mother's children. Zeal for your house has eaten me up. The scorn of those who scorn you has fallen upon me. I humbled myself with fasting, but that was turned to my reproach. Answer me, O Lord, for your love is kind. In your great compassion, turn to me. Hide not your face from your servant. Be swift and answer me, for I am in distress. Draw near to me and redeem me. Because of my enemies, deliver me. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The reading is taken from Romans chapter 6, verses 1 to 11. What then are we to say? Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptised into Christ Jesus were baptised into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For, if we have been united with him in a death like this, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him, so that the body of sin might be destroyed, and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ being raised from the dead, 
will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin, once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This reading is from Matthew 24 to 31. A student is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for the student to be like his teacher and the servant like his master. If the head of the household had been called Beelzebub, how much more the members of his household? So do not be afraid of them. There is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed or hidden that will not be made known. What I tell you in the dark, speak in the daylight. What is whispered in your ear, proclaim from the roost. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny, yet not one of them will fall to the ground, apart from the will of your father. And even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid, you are worth more than many sparrows. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, for he has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from enemies, from the hands of all that hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Last time I reflected, I was looking at the Holy Spirit as an advocate. Today, I want to think of him as a mediator. And in doing so, I am drawing on a case presented to Judge Rinder on TV Reality last week. For those of you who may not watch Judge Rinder, people are invited to bring cases that they have, disputes with tradesmen, neighbours, members of their own family, to him for judgment, and he can award damages for up to £5,000. The case I have in mind is that of a funeral director who was bringing a charge against a lady who had not paid the funeral expenses of her mother. And she had ignored all correspondence on the subject. It transpired that the mother had had a life insurance policy on which the daughter was relying to cover the funeral expenses. But unfortunately, the mother had lapsed in payment to the life insurance policy 
so the policy was invalid. And the daughter, who clearly had not resources of her own to meet the expenses, had put her head in the sand and not told even other members of her own family. The judgment went in favour of the funeral director. It could not be otherwise. He had an enforceable contract. And the daughter was urged to speak to members of her family and seek their help in this plight. There are many theological implications of this, and I'm just going to draw three to your attention. First of all, there was a judgment and the debt had to be paid as debts do. It was a good thing that the case had been brought to a court, albeit a television one. Had the funeral director said, oh, you, win a f you, you lose a few and written off the debt, the daughter could have been haunted by that debt for the rest of her life. She was a nice person. She probably would have been. And finally, after the judgment, the judge became the mediator. After the case, the parties are always brought together to ask how they feel about it. Very often this is an acrimonious affair, but not this time. The funeral director was sympathetic. The lady was apologetic and relieved. She had been released by the process, by the court case. And release is one of the meanings of salvation. And then the role of Judge Rinder, who moved from judge to mediator in the whole process. Two of the functions of the Godhead. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. As Jesus taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray for ourselves, the church and the world, and let us thank God for his goodness. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith. Loving God, thank you for giving us your grace and truth that light our lives and remind us that we Christians are not people of fear. We are people of courage. We are not people who protect our own safety. We are people who protect our neighbour's safety. We are not people of greed. We are people of generosity. We are your people, God, giving and loving, wherever we are, whatever it costs, for as long as it takes, to wherever you call us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our church, our clergy, and all those who serve Christ. We ask for your blessing on all those who are working to spread your, your words and to physically help those in need while the doors to our church building are locked. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for our country and our world as we begin the cautious ending to the strange situation we have found ourselves in. We ask that you guide our leaders to true wisdom and that you stay with us at our sides as we start to go out and about in society again. We give thanks for all those who work so hard to keep us afloat, the NHS staff, but also the others, the farmers, the transport workers, the delivery drivers. 
we ask you to give them your blessing and love as they go about their jobs and ask for that same blessing for ourselves. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have been dreadfully affected by the situation, those who have been ill, those who have suffered bereavement, those who are frightened and lonely, those who have lost their jobs or homes. Help us all to work together to give aid and advice where it is needed and remind us always of your most comfortable of words. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. A collect for the second Sunday after Trinity. Lord, you have taught us that all our doings without love are nothing worth. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of love, the true bond of peace and of all virtues, without which whoever lives is counted dead before you. Grant this for your only Son, Jesus Christ's sake, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our final blessing. God the Father, who has given to his Son the name above every name, strengthen us to proclaim Christ as Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen. And we will conclude our worship with the words of the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and remain with us always. Amen. I come with joy, a child of God, forgiven, loved and free, a life of Jesus to recall in love laid down for me. I come with Christians far and near to find as all are fed the new community of love in Christ's communion bread. The Spirit of the risen Christ, unseen but ever near, is such friendship better known, alive among us here. Together met, Together bound by all that God has done, we'll go with joy to give the world the love that makes us 